As we begin celebrations for Nigerians independence, the question is, are we truly free? And Lieutenant General Jeremiah Husseini declares that he is ready to fight for the unity of Nigeria. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladende. Welcome back. This is Plots Politics, and we are just few hours away from uh, celebrating the 60 years of nationhood. And as Nigeria marks 60 years of independence, it's only natural and wise to think back and assess the level of Nigeria's growth since 1960. Most Reverend Emmanuel Adetoye Shebadejo, the Bishop Catholic Diocese of Oyo State, in his message on this occasion, has stated that Nigeria still lacks authentic independence, adding that its citizens still have to fight for independence because of what he described as thiefing leaders, corruption, terrorists, religious bigots, and all sorts. Joining us to discuss this perspective is our public affairs analyst, Chris Nwokobia, and also the president of Arewa Conservative Forum, Yerima Shetima. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Mr. Yeah, I, okay, I understand that Chris will be joining us in a, in a jiffy from now. Let me start with you, Yerima Shetima. Uh, for me, or oh, for some of us, uh, we have heard this kind of rhetoric, and it appears that it's always turning to the deaf ears. But let me get your perspective. Has anything changed that we can say that this is what celebrating as a nation? Well, uh, I look at th those things in two ways. Uh, one, we should be grateful to Almighty God that actually leave us today to still be part of the country called Nigeria. Uh, ordinarily, if not for God's intervention, there are certain things going on that would have, by now, would have been a story or history that no more country called Nigeria. But having said that, the fact that we are still together, there's a reason to still thank God. A journey of one million miles starts with a step. If today we are just 60 years old, yes, it is true that we shall be better than we were today. Because the founding father, I'm sure wherever they are, they are shedding tears. And even in their graves, I'm sure they are disturbed. This is not the kind of a country they all in vestiges. And when we grew up also, we were told that Nigeria will be better tomorrow. And up till today, we thought it's going to be a normal thing. We will get there during our time. But it is obvious that the El Dorado is still far from us. Hmm. So the fact of the matter still remains that I am still optimistic that even if not on my generation, certainly we have responsibility to do more so that at the end of the day, Yet unborn children can see how far we've come. And I believe strongly they can also do their own bidding to get there. Okay. So let us not lose hope. Thank yes, you. all of us are victims uh, uh, of all this. I, 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 I want to keep, I don't want you to exhaust all the arsenal you have for us. Thank you for that okay. opening remark. But let me go to Chris Mwokobia. I understand he has joined us. Yeah, uh, Mr. Mwokobia, let's look at, um, okay, maybe for the benefit of uh, those who, probably may not know uh, your age, but well, let me say but for, for the purpose of uh, personal relationship, the three discussions, Nigeria is a bit older or much older than two of you. But I know you are a student of history. You believe so much in the past, the present, and the future. According to the bishop, he believed that we are here to gain true independence. Independence from what he described as thiefing leaders, independence from nepotism, independence from all kinds of uh, tribalism. Do you share that opinion too? If I understand you, uh, Coyote, I, I think that uh, we do not have to uh, have been born uh, at the dawn of independence or before independence to understand what comes or what goes with it. Uh, I think that uh, what we must begin to know 
So people, and indeed, as Amrit will question, uh, the idea we proudly say that we're a nation. But let me say this clearly, that every nation that has uh, built up its uh, country to admirable and admirable standards did work hard at it. Uh, tragically, at the dawn of independence, those who walked and led us to independence did not uh, forge a national ideology. They did not forge a national manifesto. Uh, the three major paladi paladines, if you like, of our nationhood were caught on ethnic divides. Uh, but for Zik, if you like, the others proudly, proudly talked about their ethnicity. I, I want to say that uh, Nigeria suffers from the diet of ideology, the diet of philosophy, the diet of a national manifesto. And that's why we're where we are. I think that the time has come for us as a people to begin to, to work hard at rediscovering uh, what must uh, make this great nation, this potentially great nation, truly great. I have said repeatedly that even at the, in, in the First Republic, we're able to, to, to move, we're able to, this country worked at some point, but unfortunately, when the Jack Boots and those who came by with the military porch of January 1966 came, they messed up everything. Uh, I, I think that the time has come for us as a people, as a nation, as those who are desirous of building the greatest country in Africa, to begin to address fundamental issues. And I say this, um, having identified where uh, patriarchs, the found, the, those who led us to independence failed, because I, I'm, I'm grudgingly calling them founding fathers, because uh, I, I want to say with all sense of respect that when in the, at the dawn of the First Republic, uh, people began to identify themselves as Igbos, Yorubas, Aousas, and the minorities, we lost everything that would have built up a great nation. Look at the manifesto and the national ideology of Ghana, foisted by Kwame Nkrumah. Look at that of uh, the former country called Tanganyika, Tanzania, foisted by the great Walimu. Look at what Jumu Kenyatta and his likes did in Kenya. These are all multi-ethnic and multi-religious okay. countries. But unfortunately, Professor Chris, as our, our Professor Chris, fathers, grudgingly, so Professor to say, Chris, uh, I want did to, not forge a national ideology. I want to save you from the temptation of, their of ethnicity um, and their religion okay. over that country that they betted on the 1st of October 1960. Professor Chris, I, I, I want to stay with you because I, I trust you. If I give you the room, you can go on for more than 30 minutes <laughs> Uh, giving us those wonderful, uh, powerful words. But let me stay with you. I, I think your, 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 your opinion is not very common. What we hear from some historians, what we hear from many people, many intellectuals like you, we're often reminded that these were true nationalists. We often hear that, um, that they were regional in their mindset was better for us as a country because they were growing at their own pace rather than mounting being a nationalist and uh, truly uh, they do not have that entity at heart. No, Kayade, you're making a mistake. There is a difference between uh, running a truly federal structure and being um, ethnic uh, and religious in thinking. Uh, we could, like other countries that are multi-religious, multi we could run a regional setting and run it effectively. True federalism suggests that the component sites will be strong enough to move at their own pace. I think that in 1966, when the Decree 34 and the likes came, they messed up our federalism. There's a difference, really. Don't confuse it. What I'm saying is that those who forged this nation, those who got independence for us, left the ideals of forging a patriotic nation and decided to preach religion and ethnicity. And just about every uh, one of those we call our founding fathers was guilty of it. Uh, let's not run away from it. And that is why, rather than talk about a nation, when you have a child or you're filling a form tomorrow, Coyote, they will have, ask you, what tribe are you? They will ask you, what's your religion? You know. These are the cocoonery that led to the dichotomies that trouble Nigeria. And that's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. I am, I'm not talking about, um, I'm not faulting regionalism. I am a, a die-in-the-wool fan of true federalism. 
and I've been conversing through federalism since I was 18. So I, I know exactly what I'm talking about. I am saying that beyond mountain trench ideals of the tribe, uh, my, my religion. I don't know why I have to fill a form in the 21st century to identify my ethnicity. And these are the reasons why okay. Nigeria calls some people minorities and then they are, they are major, major tribes. Okay. I think that the time I, I, has come I'll for come us if that. we must move forward to address these fundamentals Thank and you. abolish Thank you. Thank those you. philosophies and protocols that divide us. Okay, thank you for that clarification. But I will still seek more clarification on some of the opening statements you make so that we can all be on the same page that you are in. Uh, Yerima, I, I don't know. I don't know whether you are itching to say something about the perspective uh, Mr. Chris and Wokobia has brought because we can't be talking about Nigeria at 60 without making reference to what Chris grudgingly described as uh, founding fathers. What is your take? Well, my take on it is that this is reality that each and every of us, every one of us have an identity. And we must know where we are coming from. But the moment we know where we are coming from, it will be easy for us to begin to know where we are, then we will begin to channel a new course for ourselves. Yes, it is true. We are a country, but not yet a nation. And even then, we have never been a nation. There are an, an attempt by even our founding father, even during their days, before their demises, there was no nation. And our own case become worse than it was in the past. Yes, it is important for us to always reflect on where we are coming from so that we will now begin to think of better things to do and begin to put up the country in the right direction. For okay. me, okay. I still strongly believe that it is possible to have a nation with the likes of Chris. Chris have come a long way with him, but at no time uh, I've known him for over 20 years. So I give a, an example of my relationship with him. But at no time we look at ourselves, we see any differences. Despite the fact that he's not an outsider fool from where I come from. And I've never seen him as somebody far from me or a different, different person. We have shared almost everything in common until we get to where we are today. So I also urge Nigerians that we we'll be, must begin to look ourselves in that direction. We must begin to give an example with ourselves. And this is the only way we can make up a nation. Okay, let, uh, uh, let's quickly look at what uh, the bishop did mention. Let's look at, uh, we need to be independent of our thieving leaders. In clear terms, it's talking about corruption. It's talking about having true emancipation from our leaders. So when can we have what Americans will say, all men are born equal? That's to the are you, are you talking to me? Yes, Yerima. Let me have your Yes. Time. Come again. Yes. How can we truly say that um, we are not, we are, uh, 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 that our leaders are not our masters, but we can actually be free from them and demand what is truly ours? That seems to be what the bishop is saying. Well, it is true. I have always been an advocate of justice to all, where if we must have a nation and a country that we will all be proud of, of course. Those are realities that we must agree on. That look, every citizen must be seen to be equal in the project Nigeria. There's no any language of minority or majority. And on that spirit, if there's equity, fairness to all, of course there will be peace in the country. But where you begin to make some people feel they are second class citizens, another are first class citizens, or if your man is wrong, he is opportune to be in power, and you fail to look at his face and say he's wrong. Then at a point you say, ah, it's my own. And if it's my own, uh, let it remain there. For as long as it's my brother, we will never get it right. Okay. So we must be seen to agree that truly what is wrong is wrong. And that, on that basis, we can build a good country and good nation. Thank you. Uh, Chris, um, Professor Chris, uh, he has mentioned something very important. And he gave a practical example of his relationship with you. Um, why don't we have this kind of cordial relationship? Is this as a result of the fact that both of you went to university, or where exactly have we missed it, that we find it easy to slaughter ourselves, we find it easy to bring out our daggers at every slightest provocation? Let me say this clearly, uh, Kayode, that Yerima and I are like uh, brothers, two brothers from 
uh, and different models. We, we, we are pretty close. In 2011, when I ran for president, he was my vice presidential candidate. Oh, and he did that, that within uh, a short notice. Uh, and we do not see ourselves from our religious divides or ethnic divides. And that's exactly what I'm trying to say. In the First Republic, those that we called, uh, we, we so um, lucidly refer to as our founding fathers, had their ethnic divides and religious differences, and they proudly uh, danced around with it. And that's exactly what I'm saying. In Ghana, I, I'm not sure whether you know uh, the, the religion of Jumo Keata in Kenya. I don't know whether you know the religion of Kwame Nkrumah. I do not know whether you are aware of the religion or ethnicity of Mwalimu, Julius Nyerere. And, and I think that until we begin to call a spade by its name, our search for the good republic will be distant and it will be like the wait for Godot. I said this advisedly. The time has come for us to begin to uh, break down the walls that divide. One is... Uh, my, my brother had a bit in, in saying that, in, in trying to, to draw the line uh, 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 of, of understanding where we're coming from, ditto our religion and ethnicity. I don't need to know what your religion is to see you as a Nigerian. I do not need to know what your ethnicity is to see you as a Nigerian. America is fighting over 200 years after its independence issues about racial divides. You know, the debate yesterday, this morning. And I think that the time has come for us to run away from such pitfalls. If we must grow as a nation, we must de-emphasize issues of our religion and ethnicity, because that was what messed up our beginning. And if we must rediscover this country, we must look at that quote by Albert Einstein, that those who attempt to solve a problem the same way it was created are only only insane. And I do not think that our generation will be will fail to solve these problems and these challenges. That is why I am passionately saying that until we are bold enough to say that we hail our patriarchs, we hail the Abafemi Awolawas, we hail the Namdi Azikiwes, we hail the Sadwanas for leading us to independence, but identify the fact that at some point, we lost the favor for nationalism and patriotism to ethnicity and, and religion. And we must begin to take those normatives out of our national protocol. Then let me give you another instance. We have a national prayer in stanza two of the national anthem, the national pledge. Instead of saying the national pledge in national functions, we call for Christian prayers and we call for Muslim prayers. I await the time when, if we continue like that, when we will call for uh, traditional prayers or pagan prayers. Mm -hmm. I, I think that the time has come for us to truly identify where we're headed. Why can't we just say the second stanza of our national anthem or just say our national pledge before we start a national program? Must I be, be, be a Christian to be good? Must I be a Muslim to be nice? Must I be a Christian to be patriotic? Must I be a Muslim to be a great Nigerian? I think that the time has come for us to understand okay. that the world has gone beyond making religion an instrument of politics. Okay. We must understand that in the 21st century, the world is looking for men who can think out of the box and who can work greatly okay. at building their nations. And I, these men must, must not be Christians, must not be Muslims. They must be God-fearing. I think that the time has come for us to remove godism and embrace godliness. I think that the time has okay. come for us to slay corruption, which, of course, is one of the greatest problems. And I'll tell you okay, why bro. it exists. Oftentimes, we bro. don't understand that corruption is a function of our ethnicity and our religious divides. I'll surprise you. The truth is that when we continue to see ourselves as, oh, I'm first Igbo, I'm first Aousa, I'm first Fulani, I'm first Yoruba before I'm Nigerian, the tendency is for you to grab what you can from Nigeria. But when you begin to understand Nigeria as your patrimony, as that which you own, when you begin to see the green, white, green as your patrimony, then you begin to protect it. Then you begin to develop it. Okay. Then you begin to give it your Prof, best. Prof, let me just uh, whisper to you openly now that you're still going to be here for the second segment. So I know that you won't get tired of giving us the way out. 
And I must put it on record that we need this for kind Nigeria, of conversation. But Nigeria, I've always given my all. Okay. And I'm passionately Thank you so much. going to do I that. I appreciate that. At 60, I got tears on my eyes. And I think that it's time to rediscuss, renegotiate, reinvent, and rethink Nigeria oh. is now. That's, that's a bit of... Um, information and revelation for me. I thought Nigeria was actually older than you, but sorry about that uh, wrong <laughs> assumption. But let me go back to uh, Yerima. No, Nigeria is older than me. Okay, it's okay, Nigeria it's okay. Nigeria is older than me by 11 years. Oh, I thought, but oh, you and me, Nigeria at 60. Thinking Nigeria and rebuilding Nigeria. Good. Let me go back to Yerima. I, I, I want to also look at day-to-day -day issues that the bishop made reference to. And one of them, I think, um, uh, Pr Professor Chris Nwokobi has dealt with them, but let's also look at uh, the issue of where did we get it wrong. Some believe that it was the first marriage of 1914, that we should still hold on to our ethnic nationality, but relate with everyone together. But the, the, the rhetoric I'm listening to, or the language I'm listening to now tells us that we need to put that aside. We need to think as a Nigerian first. And this song seems very unpopular. Well, for me, I have not seen anything wrong by the amalgamation of 1914. But then the managers of the country are the problem. In the first republic, of course, it is a bit better than what was obtained subsequently after the first two of 1960, and that is where we track, and it has never been the same again. We run from one problem to another, from this little problem to the next problem, and the next problem plummets, and keep plummeting, plummeting until we get to where we are today. It means we need to retrace our steps, and on that basis, I'm one of those who have the view that for us to do it right and run the system very well at the level of governance for the well-being of our people. I strongly believe that that center must be centralized. If you reduce the power at the center, of course, people will now get their sense of belonging. People will go back to their normal places that is on not a presidential arrangement. Are you there? Very well. I can hear you. Yes. Not on this arrangement of the system that people are busy squashing Nigerian form taxpayers' money with all impunity, without even shape in their face, and they take what the government did under this arrangement. I am of the view, if we can review our system of governance, maybe go back to parliamentarism of governments that have always advocated for. Once the region are uh, powered, pay tax to the center, of course, everybody will be busy. Nobody will be proposing from what is going on in the other department of their about. And nobody can hold anybody to ransom. I'm of the view that we should decentralize it. Right? Let's go back to the national government or parliament, we call it whichever way, or at least reduce that power at the center. So that people can begin to take this into their hands. So that some of these basic governors who are only busy going to Africa to collect allocations will now begin to harness their resources within their various states and their regions will be putting that together to come up with something than going about with all of this madness going around and the expense of over 200 million Nigerians. This cannot continue. And the country cannot continue like this. So my word the view, let's not decentralize the government, let powers go back to regional, whichever way, reduce that power at the center so that people can begin to do better. Now we will begin to move than where we are today. Okay. We don't do that. There's no way we can make any meaningful progress Yerima, in our lives. Yerima, this might be my last question for you before I let you go, and uh, yes. I'll come back to Chris. I, I listen to this kind of conversation, and sometimes I'm a bit um, worried. For example, mm. we see these politicians that the uh, bishop is referring to, they are united when it comes to stealing the money. They are united when it comes to corruption. Nobody remembers where he or she comes from. But this has been the trend. We have had different tribes being our leaders, and tribe has never been an issue when it comes to merit. It has never been an issue when it comes to the kind of leader we want. The whole world is thinking of how to you know, advance in technology. They are thinking of how to 
do some innovative things. But we are here saying it should be this tribe, it should be that tribe. Let's kill these people. They are getting more than us. So what, can't we just put this be, behind us and look at who is good to lead us, who is better to lead us, who is the best hand to take us to our dreamland? That is why it is I've always had competent competency and I think we have competent it could come from it. But with this arrangement of zoning, going here or there, undermining competence, bringing people to the fore that have something to offer, then we will never so this is my work. Okay. Um, Thank you so much. Let me quickly get your final thoughts on this, uh, Professor, uh, uh, Professor Chris. I almost call you Professor Yerima. Thank God you're brothers. So in, in final terms, how do we believe this gospel that you preach every day? Because I'm one of your followers. I read your messages. How do we think forward and not where we come from or which religion we, we belong to? Like I said, uh, we're in the 21st century, and the world is talking about competency and capacity. The world isn't talking about Ibo-ness, Aousa-ness, Yoruba-ness, Ijo-ness, Jokun-ness, or Ichekiri-ness. No. I am a young man from the town called Ibuzo in Delta State, and uh, some say I'm Ibo by tribe. My father told me that I'm Ibo, but that has not affected any of my dealings and relationships with people. Because in the 21st century, what counts is the content of your mind and the quality of your mind. And it, it's about the content of your character. And I do sincerely think that the time has come for us to begin to think about the fundamentals. And rather than, uh, I've had people ask me, why aren't you supporting the Igbo candidacy? And I say, why should I support Igbo candidacy? And let me tell you the reason we have this agitations are simply because we have a constitution that does not work for justice. We have a constitution that is skewed to, uh, to inequity and inequality. We have a constitution that, 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 that holds one religion over the other in a country that prides itself as a secular state. We have a constitution that is unjust manifestly and until we rework that normative, until we rework our national text, will continue to argue from ethnic lines and zoning will become plausible. I think that the time has come for us to begin to advance ideas and ideologies that unite. And in the 21st century, it's about capacity, competency, and understanding. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Chris Nwokobia. Uh, thank you for your insight on this issue. And once again, thank you to Yerima Shetima, President, Arewa Youth Consultative Forum, for your time. Thank you, Mr. Coyote. And I must say happy independence to both of you. Yeah, we will take a short break. And when we return, Jeremiah Husseini in the news declares that he's ready to fight for the unity of Nigeria. That'll be up for discussion after the break.